Well, hello there. It's me again, coming at you from the shop. How's everybody doing? I'm terrible. Thanks for asking. This week, we have a cool little clock EQ spectrum kit. If you keep up with the channel at all, I made something similar to this a few videos back. I call that one Magic Dance. I'll put a link above. Honestly, when I bought this kit, I didn't know this is what it was. I thought it was just a clock. But lo and behold, surprises ensued. I mean, when this is the description, six digit digital clock soldering kit, DIY electronic clock with 18 LED spectrum effects, SMD soldering project kit, support brightness adjustment for Halloween school soldering practice. That's some good chinglish right there. In hindsight, I guess it's saying spectrum effects should have been a giveaway, but it is what it is. In the end, I actually wound up liking this a lot. It was a pretty simple build with no major hiccups. Well, besides some corrupted video files. So join me as I fly through this build with an ease not seen since someone said, Remake the Crow? What a great idea. And what does this kit have to do with Halloween? We may never know. As always, let's clean our area and make sure everything's here. Better to find out if there's parts missing now than later. There's nothing like getting to the end and find out you're missing a cap or resistor. Also, here's a layout of the tools I used, but remember, you can do this with just a soldering iron and some solder, and maybe some tweezers. With the niceties out of the way, let's get to making shit. Many videos ago, I said there had to be a better way to hold the larger IC chips in place when soldering them. So I bought a plethora of different sized neodymium magnets, I figured maybe like a magnet chip sandwich, something like that. Well, let's give it a try and see how it goes. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Well, if I'm going to be honest, the magnets need to be stronger, but I think this is a win. My execution was shit, I got too close and the iron stole the magnet, but hey, it kind of worked, right? With this being such an easy build, I mean there's not even any resistors, it's just a few components. I'll name them on screen for us curious types, and I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Enjoy the royalty-free music.
I'm back. Miss me? Yeah, me neither. Well, at this point, the last microscope file was corrupted. It happens, what are you gonna do? I'll keep the GoPro... GoGo. The GoPro crop tight. The last step is installing the four 8x8 matrix screens. I find it strange that they used four individual screens. I know they make one that has all four together. I have one in front of me. I'm guessing this way is cheaper. Speaking of, this kit was $16.99. What a bargain. So with this being the last step, and considering I kept my mouth shut for most of the time, I'll go over some of the components. The battery is needed for when you don't have the USB cable attached. It doesn't do anything but keep the time. The screens are powered by the USB connections. Speaking of, it's weird that it has two connectors. One is definitely just for power, as it only has two pins, but the other is a five pin. I have no idea why. They both work for power though, which is nice. One on the side and one out of the back. The microphone module is exactly what it sounds like. It's a mic that picks up ambient sounds and makes those LEDs dance. What I'm doing now is putting what they call a filter, but is actually just a piece of window tint, which now that I'm thinking about it, is kind of what tint is. I'm smart, Mikey. I'm smart. And with that, it's done. I'll leave you with some B-roll of this thing at work. And as always, thanks for watching.